How's everybody today? Welcome to our live at countertopepoxy.com. Thank you for following along. Thanks for hitting that follow button. It's huge for us. Thumbs up, whatever you got there. Hope you're having a good day, everybody. I absolutely have to be, always say thank you to everyone that spends your time tuning into our channels and hopefully we're a blessing and helping you guys learn a little more about epoxy. So we're doing today Opal Galaxy. Reminds me of a trip to your mom's back seat of her Opal. No, I'm kidding, that's a joke. I never, I think it was a Ford Fairmount actually. I'm kind of excited because we're doing some sprays. I kind of, I like, I like the challenge of trying to get colors that are liquid, like we're pouring them out of epoxy. They've been mixed in. It's our powdered colors mixed with epoxy. So it's going to color totally different than what we spray with alcohol. So we will try to get the Opal Galaxy look. So I'm going to bring it over here. I'm afraid to even show you what I'm trying to do because I'm not guessing it's going to look exactly like it, but hey, thank you, Devin. James, thanks a lot, man. I can look forward to meeting you guys. All right, that's a pop in blue. I actually want to be pretty random here. So, one thing that's important that was hard for me to kind of pay attention as be random but all the way to your hard edges too because it's easy when you're doing a bunch of patterns in the center of a piece to really just you don't want to waste any products so you keep staying away from the center and then you end up with the center of your piece looking like the only place you even um, did the pattern was in the center and you have this almost weird border that just fades away and that's so even if you don't want to waste by pouring it off make sure when you're rolling back onto it that you spend that time that you need to Oh, dude, thanks, James. Thanks for coming to a class already. I bet you I know who you are. I've met quite a few Jameses, but I appreciate it. I don't know how we have people. I hope I don't waste your day. <laughs> yes, we're going to. I just wanted to say I called the office last week for some advice. The girl I talked to, I can't remember her name, but she was extremely helpful. Dude, thank you, Devin. That's badass. I will say I am very, very proud of our small team here. We're a small company, but man, well, you can see why some of the best contractors in the world have been switching over to us. And it's just, I love seeing that we have amazing products, but even better, just customer support too. So, we are gonna, we're about to have a really fun upcoming flooring class where I'm kind of, those are, that's kind of one of my more exciting things. I really love doing the flooring classes. It's more along the lines of what I've always loved doing. So here we go. Really faint. The staff does rock here. Dude, I hope you guys like this because in person this is beautiful. Um, yeah. I'm from Anchorage, Alaska. I'm Argent. Okay. Anchorage. I am an art teacher. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, Art Anchorage. Thank you for actually tuning in. I hope we're helpful. A cowboy hat. I already have one, and I appreciate it. I bet yours is probably cleaner than mine. So I am going to get my torch out, and we're going to see what we get out of this. You know, I think I'm going to torch it once without spraying alcohol, and as boring as this is, not lighting it on fire. Just the, just the boring way. This is what I recommend normal people do, and if you don't walk on water and do stuff like I do, um, and you need to just be simple with your torch like this and not light it on fire by spraying alcohol. How's it going today? What are you guys grateful for? I'm grateful for y'all tuning in and hopefully you're going to have a much funner sample at the end of this live than you did at the beginning. So maybe we'll all learn something. I'm going to polish a bunch of bronze. I'm going to show you a wood grain polished true metal that I did and it's real metal I trialed down into a wood grain pattern and I kind of sanded it back to, a, to profile it and show the coarse grain, but I do already know it'll polish because I did one end of a table and it is amazing. So I love seeing that real bronze polishing right out of a 
right out on an epoxy edge like that. All right. Thank you so much. It might, I might have, my cowboy hat will have its own glitterous when this is over, I am sure. You know what? I have probably glittered on my boots and Keith Ledger's boots didn't have a damn thing on mine. Man, I am loving that blue. I don't know if y'all can see that. That is. Start mixing some purple in. Now, now that I'm spraying this much alcohol, I wouldn't dare go back to this torch. Just remember if alcohol is very flammable. Now I'm trying to just get more of the center area and I want it to be random. Because I do want it to fade out to the actual blue on the edges. Make sure to shake your bottle as crazy as that sounds. A lot of that powder gets um, um, stuck down on the bottom of the actual sprayer. So make sure that you do shake it if you're not getting a lot or adequate. Spray out. Josh Bailey, good to see you, buddy. Hope you all are having an amazing day. All right. Oh, this is going to be... Now that's uh, shake it more than twice. Yeah. If you shake it more than twice, you are definitely playing with yourself. You should shake it about 60 times or until she tells you to stop. A few hundred times. This is um, mica powder mixed with 99% isopropyl alcohol. So. I want everything to be very faded edges on this. Very faded. I don't want any harsh edges or harsh lines on this. So I'm trying to do this all consecutively so everything is wet and flows together. What's that? It is, but it's, man, that's going to be pretty though. I burned it just a minute ago, guys. Now I have so much alcohol down, we'd burn the building down with it, along with it if we did too much fire right now. Ninety-nine percent isopropyl alcohol. And now I'm just spraying some purple and some blue. Man, I have all my colors down there. Now, I believe the best thing to do right now is to walk away and show you guys polishing some true metal really quickly and let this actually set up and just let that alcohol evaporate off the top. And it's going to leave a much cleaner line than if I tried manipulating it or anything. Unless you guys want me to roll it or do something crazy, I'll do anything. So, there's a lot of alcohol down. If you're ever unsure if there's alcohol, you can usually see if there's airflow over the top or if you blow on it, you'll see that shimmering effect. You can kind of see it in the phone right now, that where you see that, that shimmery top. It's because the alcohol actually weighs about five and a half pounds per gallon and it's sitting on top of the epoxy and, and deforming the top. So as it evaporates out, it should leave that really crystal glass smooth top. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I appreciate all the likes, guys. You guys are very kind. Make sure to hit that follow button. It's a big deal to small companies like us. So now, my fun part, however you guys want to do this, I can, I can sand this on any side you guys want me to. Well, I am. This here, we troweled a wood grain down on what we actually have. This is actually all real bronze that is just unpolished. So, um, and I troweled across this and got a, an even layer. And then to create kind of the wood graining effect on this, um, I just took a, a flat trowel and trowel it kind of how I used to do concrete. It's not, it's not really a technique. It just seemed to work really well. So 
Right now what I'm doing, um, after trialing that down, this looked kind of like baby shit, to be honest. Um, so I just sprayed really heavy light turquoise over it, which what that did, light turquoise was sprayed out of a 99% isopropyl alcohol, and that melted the color into the actual epoxy. So now I'm sanding, but it's only gonna sand off the highs, leaving that really pretty turquoise on all the lows, and hence, that's how you get the wood grain effect, is now as I polish it, I'm hoping I have a polished brass wood grain popping out of a light turquoise, so. Maybe my communication sucks, but hopefully my sanding skills don't. So I am starting out with 320 on my Fest tool right here. I have a pretty firm backing pad because I am trying to cut any highs off and profile. <laughs> I try to keep it nice and flat because I, if you don't want to dig in or, or angle your pad right now, you're wanting to profile this very, very flat. And the flatter you keep this, the easier it's all going to polish together. So now I did already run this and I think probably adequately. So I just want to do one final pass, make sure I got everything. But what I'm going to try to do is figure out my edges really quickly. Now the edges are probably going to be a, not quite as nice as the top. This is my attempt of a wood grain, guys, using our bronze true metal epoxy. And this is just an epoxy, actually, that I troweled on. But it is actually real bronze in it, and we're going to polish it. It's going to be a very, very polished top, so... You guys should vote. You guys should vote on my spray paint job. I had this old black kind of nasty cabinet and I have been wanting to do this because I see all these better artist ladies that, that are actually real artistic and I want to do something like this for my daughter or something. But I finally just got all my favorite blue colors and sprayed them all on here. So hopefully if nobody wants this, I'll find a blind kid and I'll tell them it's really pretty. So, so here we are. A rose? Thank you. You guys are way too nice. A rose. Slow it down. Somebody doesn't freaking know me. I know you guys think like this guy talks like Bob Ross, but I have never set a damn thing I own on anything but max speed, Mr. Zulu. But honestly, thank you. That's actually a really good tip, and I totally agree. Since it's only a few square foot, I don't really care, but you are so right, especially with epoxy. Um, you really can heat up epoxy a lot too fast, just trying to be too aggressive with it. And story of my life, too aggressive, so. How, how does, you know, antimicrobial, whatever, a lot of people want to know that. Think about this granite, and I, I owned a granite install shop, so I used to install granite all over, and one of the downsides, people always view granite as a, as a solid surface, and they think that's synonymous with cleanliness. The downside to that, granite countertops, is they're very porous, and imagine a big rock sponge that's all of the square footage that a sneeze catches, and I mean, in a humid environment, that's a peach tree dish. And that is just factual, except it's a sponge you can't squeeze out. So then you have to try to bleach and do all kinds of crazy stuff. The one nice thing about epoxy is we have the most food grade epoxy in the world. And unlike quartz and sealed granite countertops that are done with really non-food grade, very carcinogenic epoxies over in China, most likely in most cases. And I've actually been in some of the installs, the fabrication facilities over there um, and seeing the epoxies, you can't even breathe in the room with them. So. Um, at least with a good higher grade epoxy, it's a more food grade product. It's sealed top and you can actually wipe it clean very easily. Um, and it, because it exposes everything to the surface, it forces it to be drier. So in and of itself, it doesn't grow bacteria, but good question. I have a lot of awesome health conscious people out there. Now I did bump up to 600 grit and I am running this head pretty fast on here. You are correct, but for you guys, we're going to just keep it fast. Keep nice, even strokes. It's always smoother. 
if your strokes are smooth. Oh, it's already starting to shine. You guys can't tell, but all of a sudden I'm gonna get to like one pad here in a second and you're gonna start seeing all that bronze metal pop out. You're gonna be so glad you sat through the boring phase. But if you're too quick right now and you profile too quick and you don't spend the time you need to with this 600, you'll start seeing that as you get back into the finer polish phases and you'll start realizing you didn't go through all those sanding swirls from the coarser grit. So you're not wasting any time right now to spend a little extra time and kind of just smooth it out. And man, like I say, I am starting to already see a really nice smooth top forming there. And that was my 600. What happens if the countertop gets scratched or it starts to become dull? If it scratches or becomes dull, you can do exactly what I'm doing right here and polish it. And unlike most countertops like granite and other tops that are very difficult to polish, or like Corian that you can polish, but usually it's so soft it'll just re-scratch that same day. The epoxy is pretty durable and it actually hardens with time. So if you were to come back in and polish the countertop after two years, it will surface harden it, which makes it more resistant to chemicals and stuff like that. And usually you get a harder, better top. You sand through scratches. And um, I'll show you actually some pieces we've done that in here that we were, where we actually purposely scratched it and sanded it back. And it gives you that cut geode look. You end up with a really beautiful top over time. So definitely. You know, we're not worried. This is a HEPA filter on here, and this is a shop, so I'm not too worried. There's almost zero dust going over there, and we just re-pour everything in here. Like, that piece has been poured on the other side like six times. I poured over drips that were pointing up. That tells you how many times we've poured that. So, yeah, most people couldn't believe this. This is, this is when you pour so much epoxy that you don't have anything to pour epoxy on anymore. So, okay, so now I'm bumping up to 1,000. Um, I should do a quick wipe down in between grits, though me breaking all my own rules. I don't want those 600 bit particles swirling around on here when I'm running up to a thousand. Yeah, you can definitely sand and polish epoxy. You know, I think epoxy, like a high grade epoxy like ours, it's a thick epoxy that's, that really hardens. Um, and a lot of epoxies you can't sand as easy, but a really high quality epoxy like ours that you sand, um, it continues to harden over time. You really do get a scratch resistant surface and I think they're very often just under maintained. People replace them and do stuff when they could actually just maintain them. Okay, thousand grit. Remember, I wanna just put in a little bit of time. This should be pretty quick. And a lot of times, the, my success here is very dependent on the fact that I spent adequate time with the cutting grits before this. Like, did I really adequately cut it with a 600? or the 320, and th this is all of a sudden now you're at 1,000. This is usually when you'll start seeing areas you missed or you kind of, if, if you were a little rushed or you know you didn't overlap your strokes each time. Now I don't want a lot of pressure. I just want to make sure that I hold the, the pad down nice and firmly. But basically I just, I want the tool to be able to just naturally cut on its own. You don't want to be forcing pressure onto it or, or lifting it up or digging it to the side. Okay, I can tell you guys, this is going to polish very nicely. Now this is our bronze true metal. You do trowel it down. It's about like a, it's a peanut butter consistency most, most of the time and when you actually trowel it down. So. It can be, especially the true metal. Holy cow, like the true metal and the epoxy countertops. I can say, especially like warranties, because I had to run a lot of warranties as a, a countertop shop when I did granite. And I got to see like the average warranties. And we had done Star on and Corian and some other stuff too. Um, I could not believe when I went to a, a really high grade epoxy, like countertop epoxy, that how many um, warranty issues were fixed that I ended up not coming back for. I never saw cracking. I didn't see near as much scratching as I was worried about. So now you will with a cheap epoxy or a misinstalled or just an abused epoxy. But see that with anything. This will fight a casting resin. Yep, definitely. But um, casting resin, you can also coat that with a countertop if you epoxy like this if you want it harder. So, okay, now I'm running 2000. And again, 
This should be pretty easy as long as I spent the necessary time on the cuts before. And this is our last time cutting this with a thin pad on a firm backing pad um, that for profiling purposes. From then on, I'm gonna go to, from here on, I'm gonna go to a foam back pad, which is really gonna start bringing the shine out. So our next grips is where you really start seeing shine come out of this metal. And again, this is a trowelable epoxy, but it is a true metal. So you can really manipulate it and make any kind of like wood grain, rock texture, anything. You could mix iron, bronze, brass, anything you want to. Stainless. This might look sweet stainless as well. There's that 2000. And I am sorry, this is probably boring the crap out of you guys, but now this will be a pad and then I'm gonna polish and then I might run it to a 5000. This is 3000 on uh, foam on it. So this should be where we really start seeing a little bit of just an actual real shine. And there you go, there you have it. From the right angle, as you move around on that, we're getting a really good shine. I don't know if you can see that, but that is a, now you can see that actual really nice bronze look. You know, I always take my cowboy hat off before I do my lives. I don't even wear it in my kid's school or anything half the time. It might be dumb, but I wear one a lot of times in private, and I don't know why, I don't really care. But then all of a sudden on the live, I've had you guys talk shit about it. Not Nothing rude either, but I'm always like, eh, I just won't put it on. And today I thought, I'm gonna make sure I'm always me in front of y'all. So if you like me, you like me. If you don't, you don't. Can you guys see that polish there? Can you guys see the bronze? And now realize this is only 3,000 and we are running this up to five. And then we can even go to a polishing paste. I mean, man, this is like, in person, you'd have a lady boner. Look at that, that is just... What's this? Somebody talking shit? No, I'm totally kidding. Um, that's more for a polish. This is 3000 and it's still a sand pa sanding pad. So very good question. And remember that wool usually heats a surface up and foam will cool it. So, um, once you go into a paste, you can use the wool or the foam. And I usually go foam just cause it's cooler on a slick surface specifically. Um, I am afraid, I don't know that I want to polish this cause I'm afraid of getting all that polishing paste down into the lows. So I might actually, this is crazy, but I might dry polish it and I know I'll blow through this pad and it'll burn it up really fast, but I may actually polish it with a sanding disc. And yes, I've done that a ton and no, it's not correct, but it does work. So let me grab that three. And then I do have a 5,000 and You guys have to let me know what you think of this. So, and be, be as critical as you need to be. But I do, I do want your opinions on this because I'm loving this true metal, and I, I think, I think we should start doing some countertops and houses with actually copper or brass or bronze. I mean, this stuff is extremely durable. 
And it really is as durable as any real metal. So, all right. Now I have to keep this pretty flat because the pad is. This is ghetto, but the pad's actually smaller than the disc, so you can't you can't totally make fun of me for this because, like I say, if it works, it works. All right. Oh, that's, there's your polish. I do want to keep it moving so I don't immediately burn that pad up because I know this is really putting too much heat on a foam back pad, but man, that is, I'm sure getting that sheen though, there's your shine. And that, remember, this is only 3,000. This is epoxy and this is countertop epoxy's true metal. This is an actual real brass that we trowel down. It's like a peanut butter consistency epoxy we trowel down. And I, I trawled it down and got this texture and then we sprayed an actual, this right, we sprayed this exact powder right on top of it right here. We sprayed this into the surface and this is alcohol with our mica powder that we sprayed into the top. And then um, I actually sanded with 320 sandpaper and ran it all the way up to 5,000 and now I'm polishing it with a 5,000 3M pad right here. Very, um, very ghetto like on my, buffer definitely not the tool for the job but it's the tool for the job right now so we're gonna see what we can get how shiny i can get this for y'all this is crazy because i actually heated it up a little bit polishing it it's actually got a little hot and i'm getting a rainbow metal effect on it just from the heat of polishing that is amazing that's beautiful who wants me to come and do their shower? Do a big walk-in bronze wood grain shower like this, vertical grain. freaking beautiful dude i don't know do you like that michael can you see that in person that is the best wood grain i have ever got with epoxy ever and granted it's our true metal but i have never gotten something that looks that freaking classy that is nice polish right into the metal i like i've been I've always been fascinated with the trowel jobs and troweling wall finishes and just decorative finishes with a trowel but that turned out very very nice and it really popped now i'll show you guys our next project it's a little bigger than this but the class actually built it that left town two weeks ago and i'll show you guys kind of what i'm going to be trying to finish off today and see if you guys think i'm crazy i don't know how much time i have because i got a little bit of time to work with you guys so this is all bronze edges on a wood grain table. We troweled this with just regular epoxy and I troweled the wood grain into it um, with the class. And then um, we troweled bronze on the edge. Now, when I sanded through the edge, I got a really hokey looking edge. Um, this, is, this is what I like the lives. I can just be honest with you guys and tell you guys whatever because I'm always doing something that's maybe unique or different or something that often I haven't actually done before. But as you can see, I'm sanding into the bronze, just how the one, the countertop in there, same exact material. And I actually sanded through it in some areas just a little bit. And I'm noticing on, we purposely cut this edge to make like a rock edge on here. And I love this edge, but I don't believe, I think this would be really time consuming to try to polish the entire, the hard vertical edge of this because of all the contours. 
So I was thinking of doing a light polish and just let it burn through anywhere it needs to, just let it burn through. But get a polish where you can get a polish. But what I was thinking of is um, to deal with the low areas, spraying mirror backing spray. So you still get the overall um, tone of the bronze um, in there. So you see a tiny bit of that, but anywhere there's a total void where your pad doesn't get down and actually reach, you'd see the mirror back and spray and then top that with a urethane. And I just do that right up and let it go over the edge because then I would just polish this hard top and you know that the top would be a hard polished top transitioning in on a real straight line to whatever that edge is. And I'll, I'll shut up, I'll stop talking about it and I'll kind of try to show you guys what I'm talking about and actually do it, so. So this is where the fest tool is going to come in really handy having that really firm backing pad on there because if you had too soft of a pad you wouldn't be able to sand just a hard um, a hard transition on the top surface if that makes sense you know that you, it would like um, kind of press over and you'd start breaking into that edge and you and it would be an eased edge but if you want a really crisp um, edge you need a really firm backing pad um, on a really flat sander and that'll really help you so let me see what we get here i'm gonna i'm gonna sand and polish here on my little dirty project and see what you guys you can you can vote whether we get this right or not today so you know what i'm gonna show you guys our wood grain too because the way we do this is we pour all these colors on here and it just looks like a big mess and then we scrape it with a scraper and there is a video coming out on how we do this but then the real the real pattern comes through when you sand through the top layers and you kind of expose what you'd scrape down there below so this end i'll finish and i'll show you how to polish the fake wood grain and how to polish this brass bronze as well <laughs> up now to 600 grit but first I'm gonna do a quick wipe down of this table just to make sure any major particles or anything on here are off from the 320 grit now I was using a pretty nice bonded pad so it's not like it's losing a ton of particles but I guarantee there's still probably 50 on here the floor finish the floor of course we're gonna finish it you don't have to remind me once a month so yeah, we will finish this floor as soon as I finish the table. We ended up doing such a big class project, I ended up waiting. And I had one customer wanting to see something specific on the floor, so I had kind of waited because I was going to do a demo piece, but now we're just going to go ahead and just finish it soon. Now it's getting into where I'm, I stay late at work just so I can finish the side projects for the class, but that is where all our learning comes from. Um, no, the tub application will actually contour or anything like that. You'd want to use our vertical epoxy, like our wall epoxy or a true metal or something for, for anything like that. So that was 320. Now I'm going up to 500. And remember this, if I spend adequate time now, that's what's really going to get that polish on that edge going or any polish, no matter where you're at. But I really want this brass to really pop or the bronze rather. I also want some of this wood grain to really, I'll probably sand it back because I like degloss stuff, but I'll probably polish some of this for you guys so you can see what it looks like really polished. If you guys want to learn how to polish epoxy, this will be 
probably the most in-depth, simple way to do it right here. It all has to do with cutting and profiling. Make sure that those coarser grits, you're getting anything uneven off that pat, the surface that needs to be. Overlap all your cuts, and like I say, if you're gonna spend more time, spend more time on those initial grits. That is my 500. Now I'm going to go to my 1,000. Now my 1,000 is going to clean quite a bit better because these are Festool um, discs with the holes in them. And now we'll get those 500 grit particles off of there before I go up to the 1,000. I don't want to swirl around those coarser grit particles and leave sanding swirls. So just wipe it down fast. You're going to start seeing here shortly kind of the actual grain on the table that we were working with. So you can start moving a little slower. This should start actually getting into your first part of your sort of polish, your shine on your metal. Your table should not quite be um, polished yet, but it should be very satin smooth to the touch. Should feel very, very smooth now. This, this is where it, about where I like to stop. I like leaving stuff about this shiny because, man, if you clean this up, this, this is just going to clean easily, uh, maintain really nice. You're never going to see a scratch on it. It's just beautiful. It looks a lot more natural, too. It doesn't Right now, it's still dirty and dusty, but if you were to clean this up, this is kind of the perfect sheen, in my opinion. It just feels amazing, too. Thank you guys so much for the follows. I hope you guys are enjoying and learning something today. I am going to polish this, so we'll show you how to totally go all the way to a polish with this. So anybody that's wondering what to do with old epoxy, if you have an old nasty countertop that you don't know what to do with, you just do this with it. Okay, the 2000 you'll start seeing the epoxy is going to start looking significantly different the metal will shine just a little bit more but again this 2000 is the last pad we use before we start going to more of a um, foam back squishy pad which really tends to put that polish on it you start seeing a really nice polish when you go to the foam pad so this is the last thin pad on a firm backing Shipping times are fast. So we've been really fast for a while now. We've revamped our entire shipping facility and we ship out of Wisconsin and we ship very fast all over the US. So usually same day if it's placed early in, earlier in the morning and first shipment next day if it's placed after like noon or something like that. But yeah, we're very quick now. Always give yourself time though because shipping companies have been surprising the heck out of me with their lack of care sometimes so all right 2000 and this should really start shining things just a little bit where you can tell oh that's a, actually a real metal it's this is kind of the fun part and the epoxy is going to start looking a little more like epoxy but it will be very flat. When you sand and polish an epoxy top like this, it's so much prettier than anything you ever pour. 
because you get that cut look like right here you see a totally different pattern here in epoxy than any way you could have poured it you get the really nice bisected angle because of um, how we sanded and cut the top off so there's just something about when you go back and sand and polish your tops how much nicer they look Thank you guys for all the follows. I really do appreciate every, each and every one of y'all. And let me know, remember there's a Q&A, so if there's ever something you wanna do, um, and you wanna see us do, and you're just, we never get around to it, or a, a technique, or just anything, color-wise, questions, safety concerns, anything, do a Q&A um, question to us, and send that over to us, and we will get you back a video, usually pretty quickly, sometimes within the day or the few hours sometimes next day, but we always try to get to those quickly, so, okay, final, final pass on that 2000 before we step up to something a little shinier, now that is extremely smooth to the touch, thank you for the hearts guys, this is a troweled epoxy meant to look like wood. What it, does it look like walnut? It does look good, doesn't it? With blue. Um, does it what? I'm not sure. It's a very durable product, and, and man, you could resand it anytime you wanted to. And holy smokes, this is this is looking really good right now. Three thousand. Again, not a high polish, but this is where the real polish actually starts. Now you can really tell that's bronze now. This is 3000 and it's foam back, so. That's what you're really starting to get that shine now. Try to look in that reflection. That's really what what tells you your shine level, what you're getting. But man, this is, I think we're looking really good right now. Now, say what? You, 
I do think it's best to finish off with the grain. It's not real wood though, so you do, it's not like the hard rules of polishing a lot of other things where you have to go with the grain or you're messing it up or anything. But um, I do think that if you do cross patterns, it's much more likely that if you leave a mistake or leave something visible, you're gonna, it's gonna expose itself a lot more than if you were following the grain where you could hide those mistakes. Same thing, 3000 foam pad on the back of my buffer. three and now I'm gonna to go to five and a lot of times I'll use a polishing paste as well so and I'm just about to have to jet out of here to go to a meeting but yeah yeah Michael organizes things films and then lets me know that I need to leave go figure that one out basically I'm not capable by myself if I'm left to supervise myself, I mess stuff up. Okay, this is 5,000, and that is a perfect natural sheen going back on this. As far as if you wanted something to look more like a natural rock or wood, this is what I personally would prefer. So this is how I would, only way I'd probably finish my own kitchen or anything that was one of my surfaces. A little extra work, but holy crap, what you see when it's done is just so worth it. Now, that, that is for sure to give you a lady boner. If you, if you touch that, holy cow, that's, oh, oh, I must say, that is about the smoothest top I have ever felt. So, very smooth. There's no countertop or anything like this. If you poured water on it, food, anything, very easy cleanup. And this whole entire table, 12 feet long, 48 inches wide, very large table, large piece, countertop, whatever. You could build this whole thing under $1,000. That's ridiculous with real bronze edges cut in. So thank you guys so much for joining. Thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully I look professional. I'll go, I have a clean shirt in my truck, so I'll just throw that on. It'll look like I showered just like every stucco guy I've ever worked with. So thank you guys for tuning in. Hit that follow button. Hit the like one more time. No, you don't have to do that. Just have a good day mostly and be a blessing. And if that, if you choose to kill a pedophile by being a blessing, go do that. But have an amazing day and I'll be back tomorrow. So thank you guys. Sign up for the class too.